All right, so Senator Bernard Sanders recently wrote a pretty interesting op-ed for The Guardian where he was basically criticizing the current Democratic strategy going into the midterms where they are very heavily leaning into abortion rights, obviously with the overturning of Roe v. Wade and a lot of these uh, right-wing state legislatures passing their abortion bans across the country. It's definitely a major issue, but it still remains the fact that uh, the economy and inflation are going to be the main issues going into this election. And if Democrats are not trying to sell the American people on the fact that they can better handle the economy, than Republicans, uh, and with a lot of these issues that the American people are facing economically right now, because Democrats are in power, you're basically just going to be blamed by default. So you have to go out there with an aggressive economic message. And so he's outlining what he thinks that uh, Democrats should be doing right now. So let's go ahead and get into this. He says, Democrats shouldn't focus only on abortion in the midterms. That is a mistake. So he starts off saying, as someone who has a lifetime 100% pro-choice voting record and is outraged by SCOTUS's horrific decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, there is no question but that Democrats must continue to focus on the right of women to control their own bodies. This is a fight that most Americans want us to wage, and given Republicans' extremist positions on the issue, makes them generally, uh, genuinely vulnerable. So, of course, number one, he's not saying uh, don't talk about abortion rights. He's just saying that this shouldn't be your only message. You shouldn't assume that this is going to be enough for you to win in these midterm elections. So, he says, as we enter the final weeks of the 2022 elections, I am alarmed to hear the advice that many Democratic candidates are getting from establishment consultants and directors of well-funded super PACs that the closing argument of Democrats should focus only on abortion, cut the 30-second abortion ads, and coast to victory. So I think there's an important point here in terms of, uh, you know, who's actually in the ear of a lot of these Democrats. Obviously, if, if you have, uh, you know, corporate America-funded super PACs that are giving you your election advice, of course, they are not going to want you to go out there with a strong left-wing populist economic agenda because that doesn't serve their own interests. So they're much more happy to uh, go the easy route and basically use abortion as a, uh, you know, hanging threat over the minds of voters so that they are forced to vote for the Democratic Party. But obviously, that's not going to be enough. He says, I disagree. In my view, while the abortion issue must remain on the front burner, it would be political malpractice for Democrats to ignore the state of the economy and allow Republican lies and distortions to go unanswered. He says this country has, for decades, faced structural economic crises that have caused the decline of the American middle class. Now it is time for Democrats to take the fight to the reactionary Republican Party and expose their anti-worker views on the most important issues facing ordinary Americans. That is both the right thing to do from a policy perspective and good politics. So he's 100% correct. I mean, there's nothing that Americans love more than uh, raging against the corporate elites. I mean, this is something that even Republicans have latched onto with their messaging and with their rhetoric, at least. Obviously, they can't back it up with their policy chops, but just in terms of rhetoric, I mean, how often do you hear about like Tucker Carlson or Ted Cruz or any of these right-wing reactionary ghouls coming out here and slamming corporate America or the, the global financial elites, right? All of these oligarchs that control our society, the tech overlords, etc., right? They use that rhetoric, but what Bernie is saying is that they don't actually mean it, right? I mean, all of these motherfuckers still support the capitalist, uh, the capitalist economic framework. They still support, you know, taking these donations from corporate America, essentially legalized bribes, and uh, serving their interests in the form of, you know, slashing taxes for the wealthiest people and corporations in this country, gutting regulations on their behalf, etc. I mean, their entire economic agenda is the opposite of what it means to actually fight the financial elites and serve a working class base. Now, Democrats obviously have their shortcomings on that as well, but they're definitely marginally better than Republicans, and you have to be pointing out the differences between the party on the economic front if you want people to believe that you're actually better than Republicans on handling the economy. Because again, the default position right now is that the party in power is to blame for a lot of the problems economically that uh, average working class Americans Americans are facing. So he gives a couple examples here. He says, we have more income and wealth inequality than any time in modern in the modern history of this country, with three people owning more wealth than the bottom half of our nation. Three people, more wealth than the bottom half of our nation. I mean, imagine believing that this is a sustainable economic and political model. He says, is there one Republican prepared to raise taxes on billionaires, or do they want to make a bad situation worse by extending Trump's tax breaks for the rich and repealing the estate tax? I think we know the answer to that. He says, today, 60% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, and millions work for starvation wages. Is there one Republican in Congress who is prepared to raise the federal minimum wage to at least $15 an hour? No, there's not. And of course, you know, we had Kirsten Cinema and uh, other Democratic, corporate Democrats who were, um, you know, opposed to the $15 minimum wage. Joe Biden didn't even barely lift a finger to try to actually meaningfully fight for that. Um, but at the same time, again, as he's pointing out there, you have zero Republicans who are even rhetorically in favor of raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. He says the United States pays by far 
the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. Is there one Republican prepared to allow Medicare to immediately begin negotiating prescription drug prices with the pharmaceutical industry and cut the cost of medicine in half? No. He says, we have a dysfunctional healthcare system, which despite being the most expensive in the world, allows 85 million Americans to be uninsured or underinsured. Is there one Republican who believes that healthcare is a human right and supports universal coverage? No, there's not. And I would honestly argue that probably a majority, at least a plurality of the Democratic Party does not support Medicare for all. They, using their rhetoric, say that they support universal healthcare, but that's pretty much just virtue signaling. In reality, most of them just support uh, continuing the uh, power of these health insurance conglomerates, these uh, uh, big pharmaceutical companies as well. But again, there's still an argument to be made there that, you know, Republicans are coming out with plans like Rick Scott, the one that he put forward just a couple of weeks ago. Um, they want to slash Medicare. They want to slash Medicaid. They want to slash Social Security, etc. They don't want to negotiate uh, prescription drug uh, prices with the uh, big pharma companies. Again, as you hear all of them railing against big pharma, well, where are your actual propos proposals to confront big pharma? There's none. So he continues here saying, we remain the only major country on earth not to guarantee time off for moms who have babies or need to take care of sick children. Is there one Republican who supports at least 12 weeks of paid uh, family and medical leave? No, there's not. And again, I mean, we are the only major country on earth does, that does not do this, and we are by far the wealthiest and most powerful nation on earth as well. I mean, it's just a complete fucking embarrassment. We're talking about just the most basic things that any functioning society would guarantee to their citizens. But he says the list goes on child care, housing, home health care, uh, college affordability. On every one of these enormously important issues, the Republican Party has virtually nothing to say to address the desperate needs of low and moderate income Americans. And what they do uh, propose will make, will often, will most often make a bad situation worse. He says, nevertheless, in poll after poll, Republicans are more trusted than Democrats to handle the economy, the issue of most importance to people. I believe that if Democrats do not fight back on economic issues and present a strong pro-worker agenda, they could well be in the minority in both the House and the Senate next year. So I think that he is 100% right in this analysis. Again, this doesn't mean that you just overlook abortion or that you don't talk about it. That's definitely an overwhelmingly winning issue for Democrats. But you also have to sell people on what is, as he was pointing out there, the single biggest issue that's facing them, right? With as big of an issue as abortion has come uh, to this point with the overturning of Roe v. Wade and how much that is in the minds of, uh, you know, the American people across this country, it's still the economy. It's still inflation. That is the number one issue that people usually and pretty much for the entire modern history of the United States have voted along economic lines, right? Do I feel better than I did a couple years ago? Do I feel worse? Am I able to put food on the table? Am I able to afford to put gas in my car? All of just the most basic things there, right? And again, with all of my critiques of Democrats and their many, many, many shortcomings and uh, how pathetic the uh, fighting has been from the Biden administration to get things like Build Back Better passed or to get the $15 minimum wage or, you know, even fighting for the PRO Act, which he claimed that he supported and we haven't heard a single goddamn thing about that since he was elected. I mean, there's definitely many shortcomings economically that you could point out with Democrats, for sure, right? No doubt about that. Um, but at the same time, I mean, you look at the Republican agenda, and it's just to actively make all of those issues worse for average working class people. I mean, they truly do serve the uh, oligarchs within this country. They serve corporate America. They serve the military industrial complex, somehow even more than Democrats do, which is saying a lot, right? And so, you know, if you're not going out there, you're not selling people on the idea that you can be better trusted to handle the economy, then you're just opening the lane for Republicans to go out there and make these bullshit arguments about how inflation and the economic crises people are facing right now, it was because of Joe Biden's radical socialist agenda and, uh, you know, using narratives like that that are complete bullshit. I mean, it's corporate America that has been price gouging the American people, right? It was supply chain breakdowns, thank you to neoliberalism, that caused the uh, supply chain weaknesses that led to a lot of the increased costs and inflation that we are seeing right now. So, I mean, at least put your half ass like milk toast agenda in front of the American people and then sell them on that. Because if you actually compare the Democratic economic agenda, especially if they pick up a couple Senate seats and somehow miraculously manage to hold on to the House, if you are able to sell them on the promises of like, you know, if you give us two more senators, if you give us a couple more House seats, we are going to do X, Y and Z. We are going to give you higher wages. We are going to expand Medicare and Medicaid. We are going to lower prescription drug uh, drug costs across the board. We are going to do all of these things to materially improve your lives. Then you would have a substantially better chance at winning these elections. But again, I mean, the lesson here is that, you know, there's an underlying reason why Democrats are not aggressively poking, pushing their economic agenda. And it's because a lot of them don't really believe in it. I mean, a lot of them use it to, uh, you know, run some of their campaign strategies. A lot of them uh, uh, rhetorically pretend to support a lot of these policies. But when it comes down to it, they're not really willing to uh, fight a lot of these uh, corporate interests. They're not really willing to uh, stand up and uh, fight for the agenda they say they believe in. So, I mean, listen, you got a fundamental choice right now. Do you want to, uh, you know, risk 
losing the House, losing the Senate because you're solely focused on uh, abortion rights as the only issue that you're running on? Or do you want to maybe expand that and demonstrate to the American people that you are marginally better on economic issues as well and can, if you hold on to the Senate, you hold on to the House, provide desperately needed um, relief to them economically and uh, actually tackle inflation in a meaningful capacity that is, unlike Republicans, not going to make the situation aggressively worse. Everyone is saying good politics guy has the best politics. Believe me, no one does it like him. Believe me, everyone is saying.